what we knew would happen has happened, and it looks like uh, President Trump's throwing a, kind of a pitching a fit, and uh, a bunch of protesters decided to become rioters. Now, that leaves some questions, and uh, a lot of people talking who actually shouldn't be talking, but we'll get into all that. And I've got some questions about this mess. I'm going unscripted today because I want to hear more of this story, so we're going to cover it a little bit. Also, this is the time for the new media narrative about conservatives. Yesterday was not a good day. Really, actually, kind of a bad day. Let's talk about it. This is Gene, and you're listening to Dumbasses Talking Politics. Hey, hey, this is Gene. Welcome back to Dumbasses Talking Politics. Um, I was going to do a podcast concerning the uh, election in Georgia, which has turned out to be an absolute disaster. Uh, I, I, <laughs> wow. But first things first, we need to talk about what happened uh, yesterday on Wednesday. What a nightmare. But first things first, let's cover it. Uh, Joe Biden is finally president-elect. Uh, it's done. He's going to be president on January 20th. He's going to get sworn in. Everybody should probably just start dealing with that. The nightmare will begin because he's going to end up with a he's going to end up with a completely democratic congress. And I think uh it's time to deal with that. Now we're going to talk about that tomorrow. I actually wrote that podcast already. Um but yesterday was a big day, and I thought we should talk about it. Now, I didn't even script this. This is going straight from my memory. This is going straight from my heart. So, And I hate talking about my heart, but I didn't have time to do a lot of uh, media cutouts and things like that. So I'll probably do that on Friday. Or no, I'm not going to be able to do a podcast Friday, but I, I'll probably do that a little later. So what happened? So yesterday, Congress, uh, the Senate gets together, and they are going to certify the election results from the Electoral College. And, of course, there were going to be uh, objections. So, right off the bat, there was an objection during the third state, Arizona. So, when they have an objection, the two uh, houses actually get together and they start debating. And then they determine whether or not the objection should be sustained. If the objection is sustained, and you don't need to know this because no objection was sustained because we've got a Democratic uh, House of Representatives, uh, then it would have gone to the state legislatures to sit back and actually look at the results and look at whatever um, look at whatever evidence there is. Of course. They objected to the big states, Georgia, Pennsylvania. Um, Pennsylvania was the last one. They did that last night. Uh, Arizona, Nevada, Wisconsin. Nothing came about of these objections. No evidence was actually shown. And so they moved on. Now, at the same time, President Trump was down the Washington, D.C. mall, and he decided to have a speech. Now, this speech, it was a rally. Uh, Tens of thousands of people showed up to this rally, and it was a raucous rally. Uh, Trump was talking and talking and talking about how the election was stolen, how this is not fair, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then he said that he was going to march with the protesters to Congress, and they would sit back and we, they would protest the decisions that were being made in the Congress. Needless to say, these decisions, uh, needless to say, um, Trump did not actually walk with them. He ended up in the White House. And those tens of thousands of people <coughs> started walking over to the Congress. Well, it started, I, I guess, peaceful enough. Now, let's, let's go over Trump's speech. And this is a problem I'm going to have with Trump, and I'm going to piss off some conservatives here. And I know I'm going to piss off conservatives because I've pissed off my own father when I've said this. First off, he, uh, Trump did have his chance to actually get this election checked or audited. Nothing happened. There wasn't enough evidence. It didn't happen. President Trump was not 
going to be president of the United States on January 20th. And one of the things I always thought with Trump is, okay, you know something? You don't have to concede, but you can sit there and say there will be a smooth transition. Everything will be fine. We're going through all the legal challenges. Instead, President Trump has a tendency of being pissed off and making these speeches that raise the temperature with his base. I don't like these speeches. I've never liked these speeches. As a matter of fact, I think he lost the election because he continually made speeches. And he did not sit back and say, let Joe Biden talk. Because Joe Biden talking would have been something that would have destroyed Joe Biden. But he didn't let Joe Biden talk. Well, this was one of those speeches yesterday. It was basically Donald Trump. I love him. I voted for him. I wish he was going to be in the White House for the next four years. I do think there were shenanigans in these elections. But this speech was a temper tantrum. And by telling them, telling people to go, and he should have said, you know, you want to go over there. Let's go over there. Let's peacefully protest. Right? Protest. That's good. There's nothing wrong with peaceful protest. He went, uh, They all those people, after the speech, they were feeling really good, waving their Trump flags and their don't tread on me flags and their American flags and things like that, went over to the Congress. Now, it started, it started slow enough, but then people started doing weirder things. They started walking up the steps of the Capitol building. This was not a good thing. Eventually, apparently, there was a real breakdown with the Capitol Police, which I, I, I don't know enough about that. I know there was a huge breakdown with the Capitol Police. People actually entered the Capitol building. And this was I was watching this on Fox News, right? And I had a lot of questions about this. But they entered the Capitol building through an open door. And in the Capitol building, there is a statue sanctuary, and there are the uh, there's a pathway, and the pathway's roped off, so you can't go directly in front of the statues. But people were walking down the pathway; they weren't jumping over the roped off area. And there, I saw three police officers sitting there, so people were walking in and out. You could tell the police officers didn't really know what to do at this point. Um. Well, it began to escalate. People began to break in, break windows to break into certain areas. At this point, Congress, which was in session to certify the electoral vote, they decided, okay, um, Capitol Police said, and um, it said, okay, and Secret Service said, okay, we need to get these people out of here. So they put them in secure locations. The more aggressive... Now they're not protesters, the more aggressive rioters. Listen, if I found that the Capitol building was actually opened and I could walk in, I'd probably walk in. Now, I, that doesn't mean if a cop said, you know, you're not supposed to be in here, that I, I would start swinging my flag at him or anything. It just means, you know, I, I kind of like the Capitol, but I, I can't lie. I like the Capitol building, but I would leave. Well, at this point, it got violent. Uh, the police were pulling out their guns um, in the Senate chamber. Uh, people had actually broken into the Senate chamber. They were walking around, reading papers. Some idiot was sitting, and he's a he's a conservative idiot. I don't know if he's alt-right, but he's a conservative idiot sitting in the chair that Mitch McConnell was sitting in. It was anarchy. It had gone absolutely crazy. Now, I've got a couple questions. We're going to go over the questions a little bit later, but it was bad. Four people ended up being killed. Uh, six, seven police... Uh, no, I think it was about 13 police officers ended up injured. This was an absolutely terrible thing. Mike Pence was sitting back and telling everyone to calm down. Donald Trump didn't really do a lot. He sent, up two, he sent out two tweets saying that this should be a peaceful protest, not a violent protest. But everyone was encouraging... President Trump to actually go in and do a video, get on national TV and say something. I don't know how pro rioters are actually going to see. And by the way, most were actual peaceful protests. They were actually outside. 
A lot of people were on the steps, but I mean, no one's really getting them off the steps. The second the police tried to get them off the steps and those protesters started pushing at the police, they become rioters. They're just as bad. Then uh, the pro the rioters started breaking into the offices of the representatives. One protester, a rioter, actually was sitting in Nancy Pelosi's chair in her off. It was disgusting. And it was exactly the last freaking thing that needed to happen for conservatives, the conservative movement, or the Republican movement. It was disgusting. And I'm going to tell you, it was disgusting. Now, a lot of people are not going to like that. It was sick. It was bad. I still have a couple of questions about it. We'll, we'll get to those questions. But I thought it was a terrible thing. It did not help our movement at all. And I hear a lot of conservatives say, yes, well, we're angry. We're angry. That's fine to be angry. You can fight, but you fight in different ways. You don't fight like this. This is not a fight. This is a breakdown. This is a civil war. People compared this to the storming of the Bastille during the French Revolution. Hey, here's a newsflash. The storming of the Bastille was not a good thing. People's heads were chopped off. This was a bad thing that happened. And it shouldn't have happened. And they should find those people that did that. And they should throw those freaking people in jail. Just like, remember I said this, with the BLM and the Antifa riots. There's my big question. Those people from BLM and Antifa should have been arrested. They should have been thrown in jail. And if they burn down a business, they should be freaking thrown in prison for the, and the keys should be thrown out. It does not change here. As far as I'm concerned, the sedition that these people committed by storming Congress was just as bad as burning businesses and things like that because now you're attacking democracy. Now you're actually attacking democracy. And I have a real problem with this. These riots were disgusting. They were wrong. You heard police. Conservatism, conservatism is supposed to be about being with the police, being on the side of law and order. And you're hurting police officers? And then all day yesterday I heard about a 14-year veteran of the United States Air Force was shot in the chest. And the police were this and the police were that. I heard this from some conservative, not a lot of conservative circles, a lot of conservatives, especially in the conservative media, said, no, this is unacceptable. She was also breaking a window and crawling through. That, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, that needs to be stopped. And if she got shot, I'm, so I'm, I'm sorry she's dead. I... I appreciate her service but she was doing something highly illegal and I just like with the uh, Antifa and BLM riots would have been just fine with a cop shooting those people that were burning buildings and I think it was a I know the police officer was put on leave but when you got a group of people that are trying to break into one of the most hollowed places of our democracy I want that place protected. I don't want I don't want um, people walking into the White House. I heard someone say, I, I think it was uh, Ben Shapiro, I, I can't remember. You know something? If ISIS was watching, they would simply say, why didn't we do this instead of trying to blow up a car someplace? We could actually just walk into the Congress. It seemed like it's pretty easy. We could have waited till there's a riot and just broken into Congress. Now, am I going to blame the Capitol Police? Am I going to blame the Secret Service? Am I going to blame uh, the Washington, D.C. Police Department? N yes and no. I thought this should have been better prepared for, but I also understand that the D.C. Police, the Capitol Police, and... The Secret Service are, are under orders by the bureaucracies above them. And guess what? They were told to stand down. Muriel Bowser of the Washington, the Washington D.C. mayor said, did not call the, uh, did not call uh, the uh, Washington uh, D.C. PD to go in there. She did not call the uh, National Guard. The superiors for the D.C. court, D.C. police, or not D.C. police, excuse me, Capitol Police, wanted them to stand down and just not 
move up the heat, turn up the heat, heat's already turned up. When they start breaking into the Capitol building, the heat's turned up. Okay, get everyone in there. So, yes, I, I don't think the DC I don't think the DC police, I don't think um, the National Guard, I don't think the Secret Service, I don't think the Capitol Police, they were all prepared for this, and they should have been, but I don't necessarily blame them. I think they did whatever they could do, and that's it. Now, here are some questions that I'm still waiting to answer. That's why I didn't script this. You're not going to find it on dumbassestalkingpolitics.com. Actually, I take it back. I have really just one question. Uh, that question is, well, first off, let me preface this question. Most of the people in the crowds were actually um, from out of town. So they weren't from Washington, D.C. That's fine. I mean, I, they interviewed one person from Florida. You know, I drive up to Florida. It's just not that far of a drive. It's like two or three hours. All right. Um, but here's the main question. How much of this was actually conservative violence? And how much was this implants for Antifa? Now, notice I didn't say Black Lives Matter. I specifically said Antifa. There are a couple things I saw. Now, I was watching the riots for probably two, three hours. To my fiance's chagrin. Um, and one of the things I noticed, there were a lot of guys with black helmets, black garb. Um, a couple of them had the black helmets. Black. These guys were looking for fights. They did find bombs. They did find bombs. Now, I'm not saying this was not a conservative riot. And I'm not saying Trump didn't raise the temperature. He did. But how violent, if there was actually plants, Antifa plants, and let's face it, Antifa is notorious for this. Within Washington, D.C. today, yesterday, is it possible that some of the violence, for example, they found two bombs today. I've never seen a conservative uh, protest where people are sticking bombs around, ever. You never had that with um, the the open the borders, open not the open the borders, the open the, the economy movement. You never saw that with the Tea Party. That just wasn't the thing. Trump rallies, they never had bombs all over the place. Yeah, people can be pissed off. That doesn't mean they're going to start lighting bombs. Before I sit back, and I, 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 am abs I absolutely have to condemn every conservative there. And there are conservatives there. There's no question. The gal who was shot was a conservative. The guy who was sitting in the chamber, in the Senate chamber, Actually, sitting in Mitch, or not Mitch McConnell's, but in Mike Pence's seat, he was conservative. The guy, I think it was the same guy, I'm not sure if it was the same guy or not, but the guy who was sitting in Nancy Pelosi's, he is a conservative. There's no question, this was by radical conservatives. Okay? But what about the bombs? Were those by conservatives, or is it possible this might have been an Antifa thing? Especially considering... I don't know. I've just never seen a conservative set a bomb anywhere. That's a question we just don't know. Uh, there aren't any answers. Uh, hopefully, they go out, they review tapes, and they start actually arresting these people. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Just because... Just because... Uh, you don't agree with what's going on, and I, I truly believe we're heading to a civil war, but I think it'll be more cultural than actual physical war. This is no good. If if I'm going to sit back and say those assholes who were blowing up buildings and setting buildings on fire and destroying property and assaulting and raping people and Chaz and shot because of BLM and Antifa riots, if I say those people are assholes, guess what? The people that broke into our government are assholes too. I don't like what happened with Biden either. I think Biden cheated. I think Biden's people cheated. I don't think Biden cheated because I think Biden's, you know, senile. But I, I that doesn't mean you support this kind of crap. We'll live for two years. We'll live for two years. 
until we can get out the senators and we can get out. And I'm I'm not horrible. And you'll hear this in the podcast tomorrow when we talk about the Georgia elections. But we can't do this. We've always been the movement, the party of law and order, and this just effed it all up. It's not good. Because, yes, I may think there's some Antifa in there. It's not all Antifa. Sorry, we know it. It's not all Antifa. I'm waiting for more news about this. I'm sorry if 13 police officers are assaulted and they have to go to the hospital. I don't think I don't agree with it. If some gal is crawling in to break into the House of Representatives and she gets shot in the chest, guess what? I'm law and order. What she was doing was wrong. It was a good shoot. So, but I do want to know that. That is that is a thing. I, I do want to figure out if this was mo- if this was an in- instigation to or if Antifa was involved. And mind you, I'm not saying BLM here. I I really believe it's Antifa. Now, after the riot was actually quelled a bit, Mitch McConnell got up there. And Mitch McConnell made it very clear that he did not believe that the objections were appropriate, that they were legal, but not appropriate because there was no evidence and he would be voting against all objections, which I think, that's fine. I, 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 I agree with him. He even mentioned the fact that we are pissing on the Electoral College by objecting left and right. Just because we lost doesn't mean we're going to lose next time. I think he's right. I think Joe Biden's going to be president. Let Joe Biden be president. And in two years, we guess what? We vote again. Hopefully with a lot better uh, processes than we had this election. But we vote again. And we kick people out of office. I have no problem with this. Mike Pence also said the same thing. He said, and this is to Trump's chagrin, he said that, listen, um, I'm here to count the votes. I am not overturning an election. Which is exactly correct. I totally believe he shouldn't overturn the election. If he, It's not his job. And the vice president of one party, one man should not have that power. I totally agree with everything he said. Cruz's argument, when I heard his speech, was really iffy when it came his speech with Arizona. I didn't hear it last night. I went to bed. They were still going last night. Um, I, I just didn't see any reason for these objections. But here's the thing. Mike Pence walked up and he condemned the riots like crazy. He was pissed at Donald Trump for raising the temperature as well he should be. You could tell he was kind of pissed at Donald Trump because Donald Trump actually was basically telling, not in so many words, but telling Mike Pence to overthrow, overdo the vote. And that's not Mike Pence's job. Mike Pence... His job isn't even to count the votes. It's to hand an envelope to somebody, open the envelope, look at it, hand it, and have someone else count the vote, and he just registered the vote. That's good. But you know something? There are other people that said things about this whole riot. When Mike Pence talked about it, he was bipartisan as all hell. Hey, this is not good. We should not do this. This is an attack on democracy. He was chewing out the conservatives that were attacking And I understand, I said Antifa might have been involved. Antifa was not involved to a great extent. They were just there, okay? I I don't think. Maybe they pushed people a little bit. There is video out there. But the last thing I need to hear about is anything from Democrats about riots and protests and how they're destroying our democracy. Chuck Schumer sat back and compared this to um, Pearl Harbor and how conservatives were attacking our democracy. Really. This is the same Chuck Chuck Schumer that never condemned Antifa, that never condemned BLM when businesses were being burned throughout the country for three, four months. This is Chuck Schumer who never condemned Chaz, Chop, or whatever you want to talk, taken over by a bunch of Antifa anarchists. 
I don't want to hear what he's got to say. I really don't care what he's got to say. Yes, this was bad. And conservatives, Republicans, all should condemn him. And so far I'm hearing, yeah, everybody's condemning it. But I sure as hell don't need to hear a Democrat condemning it because none of them condemned the riots. Do you know who else never condemned the riots? And had no problem condemning Trump is Joe Biden. Joe Biden was asked straight out three times by President Trump, not by the moderators, whether he condemned Antifa. Do you know what Joe Biden said? You may remember. It's on YouTube. Look it up. Joe Biden said Antifa is not a group. It's an idea. Well, this idea has a uniform. This idea has a symbol. This idea has a flag. No, it's not an idea. It's a group. It's an actual group of people. They may be a loosely formed group, but it is a group of people. He never condemned the riots, whether it be BLM or Antifa. Last thing I need to hear from him, where he could have turned down the temperature on Antifa and BLM because they would have listened to him, is to hear him sit back and say that it was President Trump's fault. He was President Trump was being blamed for all the riots. So yeah, Joe Biden, I, I, I got nothing with him. I really don't give a damn what Joe Biden's got to say. And any criticism, and by the way, he made he made a speech yesterday, took no questions. He made his speech today, took no questions. Because what and, and he wouldn't have gotten a great question, but my question would have been what's the difference between President Trump not stopping the violence on Capitol Hill and you're not stopping the violence by Antifa and BLM throughout the country? Or even acknowledging there is violence. Yeah. I don't think this is a this is a real deal. I really don't care what what Joe Biden's got to say. Oh, by the way, Chuck Schumer now wants the 25th amendment implemented so they can remove Trump 13 days before Trump is leaving office. And by the way, Trump has said it will be a peaceful transition. Trump's probably going to Scotland to play golf, so he's not going to be at the inauguration, which I don't blame him. Why bother? He hates Biden. Biden hates him. I, I don't see the purpose of he being at the inauguration. I wouldn't blame him. I think it's kind of a childish move. But, I, yeah, I, I don't blame him. <clears throat> um. The, this is the problem that is happening, and this is where I really wanted to bring up some sound bites, but it's so new, and I, I needed to talk about it, and I'm actually really busy. I'm going to a funeral tomorrow. It has to do with the new narratives that the media is going to cause. Because here's the thing. One conservative riot is always going to be down, is always going to be upplayed compared to 50, 60, 70, 80 um, Black Lives Matter and Antifa or left-wing riots throughout the country for four months. It'll always be over. It'll be overplayed. And it is being overplayed. Right now, we have some new narratives that the media is coming up with. Some of them are just absolutely asinine. The first one is conservatives are racist. And this proves that the system is racist. Yeah, I, I don't get it either, but I'm going to explain it to you. So one, what these people are actually saying, and I'm going to have sound bites later. I, I just can't have them now. I'm already running late. Uh, is that conser- that the reason conservatives aren't afraid to storm the Capitol building is because they were all white and police would not shoot white people. Um, they miss a couple of things that Police were not shooting black people during the Antifa riots or the BLM riots. That wasn't happening. Police in Portland, Seattle, Minneapolis, Chicago, Washington, D.C., Boston, Austin, New Orleans, Los Angeles, San Francisco. No one was being, no black people were being shot. 
because they were told police were told to stand down. So right off the bat, the hypocrisy there is just I mean, Jesus Christ, in Portland, uh, the BLM protests took over part of the city for a month and a half. And nobody, they took over police stations. Nobody shot anybody. They should have. The second you start shooting, you st- yeah, the police should shoot back. But that never happened. So you watch. It's going to be conservatives are racist, blah, blah, blah. And this is why this riot did not help our cause. It really did not help our cause. Because we just keep saying we're not racist. Uh, We've never been racist. What you're talking about with Jim Crow happened 50 years ago. I wasn't even alive when Jim Crow was around. And I'm old. I'm 53. I'm an old man. I don't remember Jim Crow. I definitely wasn't around for slavery. Heck, my family wasn't even in the country when there was slavery. So it's just, it's it's stupid. It's a stupid argument. It's a lie. But it's made to demonize conservatives, and that's what the media wants. Well, guess what? Those extreme conservatives just gave the media what they need. And they're going to play this and play this. The conservative movement can not have a protest now for another two years, four years, ten years. And I guarantee you, in that time, there will be hundreds of leftist protests because some black guy got a paper cut while he was filling out his booking forms in a jail. That's not racist, by the way. That shit is happening. And the media will play into it. And by the way, Fox News is part of that media. Fox News is no better. So that's the first narrative. It's a bad narrative, but the reason I point this narrative out is because Joe Biden used that narrative today, about 20 minutes ago before this podcast was released. When I was listening to him talk, he was talking about how white people were never feared the police and getting shot. Well, a white person was shot, and three other white people are dead because of this. And do they deserve it? I'd say yeah. If you're breaking the law... You're breaking into our bastion of democracy. Yeah, you get what you deserve. The second narrative is riots are okay as long as you agree with us. This is just a stark contrast of the BLM Antifa riots from, I don't know, May up until August, September. Oh, they're still happening. And this conservative riot. How quickly CNN just absolutely pissed on this riot. But meanwhile, remember Chris Cuomo? Hey, it's a democracy. These people are hurting. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, and who said riots needed to be, who said uh, protests needed to be peaceful and things like that? And meanwhile, he destroys this riot. It's always going to be the purpose of the riot is going to determine whether it is a valuable protest. How about this? Let's just go. I mean, the Tea Party never rioted. Never rioted. No one had weapons. Okay? Most of the, I would say all of the uh, protests concerning opening up the economy, none of these were riots. They were protests. Yeah, the guys were armed, but they were never threats. The police never saw them as threats. The police were taking pictures with those guys. They'll never point to those. And those will always be considered riots, even though they are actual protests. Meanwhile, a CNN reporter will be standing in front of a burning in building and sitting there and saying, oh, these are mostly peaceful riots. There's a fucking building burning behind you, dumbass. How is that mostly a peaceful protest? Looks like a riot to me. So... That's the second. And by the way, these I, I got these from uh, the Ben Shapiro show. I, I thought they were excellent, so I threw them in here. The third is that this is going to be the fault of not just the conservatives or Republicans that were at the protest slash riot. This is the fault of all conservatives. I mean, you, there's already being calls that, uh, even though 
President Trump's language was not good. President Trump didn't encourage this. President Trump didn't encourage this. He just wanted a protest. These guys made it into a riot. President Trump didn't turn down the temperature. I'm not giving him any excuses here. But this is going to be one of those things where um, President Trump should be thrown in jail. He should be taken out of office. Uh, Mitch McConnell, they said, should be taken out of office. All of those Republicans that objected to the vote counts should be pulled out of office. We're already hearing this. Mike Pence should be pulled out of office. Everybody should be pulled out of office that agrees because it's all their fault. Everybody's fault. All conservatives had something to do with this. Even though, yeah, well, what about the conservatives outside that didn't storm the building? Were they guilty too? They were actually just sitting outside doing a protest, which is what they're supposed to do. I would even say that it was a small minority that did that. Now, doesn't matter. It's bad. It's a bad look. But it is a small minority that broke into the Congress and did all that damage. Most people were outside. Most people were just standing on the steps. And the police didn't have a problem with them standing on the steps until they realized we're losing control and then they wanted them off the steps. And guess what? When you were watching the video and the police started moving people off the steps, guess what? Most people left. They walked off the steps. Are those rioters or are they peaceful protesters? They're peaceful protesters. Policeman wants me not to do this. I Okay, I'm not going to do it. Because it's the law. I... I just thought I saw the whole thing is really bad. I saw the whole thing. I think our we are in trouble as a culture right now. Right now, the civil war with the culture is turned up. The heat's turned up. I mean, I'm not going to change anything. If some guy is walking down the street and he's putting a, wearing a dress, he's still going to be a man to me. I don't care. I'm not changing the way I am. And I shouldn't change the way I am. No conservative should. Be respectful. Respectfully disagree. Don't go taking bats, bombs, and I still don't know if the bombs were actually from these rioters. I want to say Antifa had something to do with this. I haven't even seen the location of the bombs because I guarantee you the bombs were probably around where a lot of conservatives were sitting, a lot of protesters were standing, and maybe they were there to kill protesters. I don't know. I haven't seen, and this is one of the reasons why I'm doing this off the cuff. Okay, uh, that's enough. You can uh, follow me on Parlor at Dumbasses Talking Politics. You can follow me on Twitter at Run and Fool, R U N N I N F E W L. You can download or listen to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Podcast Addict, Podbean, Stitcher, and YouTube. Visit my website at www.dumbassestalkingpolitics.com. There's nothing there today, but you can. Thanks for listening. Be calm. It's all going to work out. Not for Trump. He's kicked off of Twitter and Facebook, but that's another story for another day. This is Gene, and you're listening to Dumbasses Talking Politics. (laughs) 